Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim in the name of Allah most gracious most merciful Inshallah today we will be speaking about friends and what Islam teaches us about friends as we all know every one of us is born into a community and a society where we interact with people where we interact with from a very young age others either the neighbors or those whom we go to school with those whom we have seen elsewhere in the neighborhood and so on and as time passes we become closer to them and they begin to be known as our friends what is it that islam teaches about friends we need to know that we are governed or we should be following a certain set of rules and regulations regarding how to interact with people whom we consider friends and what we should be sharing with them and how they should be impacting on our lives and for this reason we have dedicated these few moments to share the teachings of the prophet muhammad may peace be upon him which are the teachings of islam with one and all to start with he says يُعْرَفُ الْمَرْءُ بِخَلِيلِهِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ A person is known by the friends that he or she has and therefore it is very important for every one of you to select their friends, his or her friends very carefully and to make sure that they have not befriended those who will have a negative impact on them. These teachings of the blessed prophet Muhammad may peace be upon him are priceless. Because if he says a person is known by the type of friends he or she keeps, what we need to realize is that is exactly the way it will be. For example, and I'm going to give you just an example off the cuff, if a person's friends are all on drugs, there is a 99% chance that that particular person is also on drugs, even though they might hide it very well to their family members and others. And what is it in common between them if they were not on drugs? However, sometimes, and this is 1% of the time, where a person has 30 friends and all of them are on drugs and they are claiming that they are not on drugs, there is a 1% chance that they may be telling the truth. And perhaps they may be working on those friends of theirs. However, there is a greater chance of them deviating. And for this reason, you know, there is an English saying, birds of a feather flock together. It is important for us to know we interact with, we mix with people who are like-minded, people who think in a similar manner people who understand a specific type of understanding. When they discuss, they have a certain level of discussion. So those we consider our friends. That is point number one, which means it's important to mix with like-minded people, those who will not mess our habits, those whom we will be able to develop with and through, rather than losing and becoming negative in the process. Sometimes people ask us a question, and that question is answered also in the religion, that if I were to be in good company, that which is good for me, those people who are good for me, I might be bad for them. So how do I know who is in good company and who is in bad company? Well, the religion has an answer for that and it teaches us that if you have a good impact on someone, it means they are in good company, they have good friends. And if you are having a bad impact on them, then they are in bad company and vice versa. Which means if they are having a bad impact on you, then you have bad friends. And if they are having a good impact on you, even though you might not be that grand a person, then they are definitely good company for you. So that solves that matter. Now let's move further to the sharing of secrets between friends and what type of information we should be giving them. There is a hadith or a saying of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, that is found in Sunan al-Tirmidhi where he says, أَحْبِبْ حَبِيبَكَ هَوْنًا ما عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ بَغِيضَكَ يَوْمًا مَا When you love someone, you love them in moderation because one day they may become your enemy or they may dislike you. This is a very powerful teaching. The reason is when we love someone, when we are close to someone, when we have friends, we sometimes share some secrets with them. We give them a little bit of information that we would not like others to know. In that particular instance, we can become enslaved by that particular piece of information that they are holding and then they can either blackmail us or they will hold it to the degree that they can make us do whatever they want 
threatening to release that information. For this reason, it is important for us to know what type of information we give people and how much we give them. And this is why there are certain things you do not share with anyone at all, especially when a person has committed a sin. The religion teaches us that we should never be proud of sharing a sin with others. The Quran says in Surah An-Nur, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُحِبُّونَ أَن تَشِيعَ الْفَاحِشَةُ فِي الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Those who like to spread tales of sin between the believing or among the believing people, for them will be a severe punishment in this world and the next. Which means we should not spread tales of immorality between the believers. If someone has committed a sin, it's their secret between them and their maker. They should repent for it as soon as possible and believe that they are now forgiven. Because forgiveness is something that Islam is based upon. And the, the Almighty is most merciful, most forgiving. So when a person begins to share the way they have sinned, what they have done, the sins they have committed with others, they become enslaved by those people. Tomorrow, when we'd like to break off the relation for legitimate reasons, they will always be holding some information about us that we would be very embarrassed about. And sometimes we might not be able to break off a relation, whereas we have legitimate reasons to do so solely because they are holding some information that we have given them that is not very, very good about us. And we ask the Almighty to protect us all from this type of behavior. So these are two points we've mentioned about friends. Thirdly, what we also need to know is do not allow anyone who wants you to be their friend to actually be your friend. The reason is you need to choose your friends. Do not let those who want you as their friend always be your friend because they may not be material of friendship. That friendship may, may end in or it may result in you degrading yourself, dropping yourself. People who mix with others who swear a lot, they will end up swearing. People who mix with others who go to the nightclubs and who go to the, the, you know, the uh, pubs and the places of drinking and so on, they will end up doing the same because of peer pressure. So not everything that they do is right and therefore we should not allow them within a specific circle. The next point I'd like to make mention of is we need to have circles of relation. When we say circles of relation, you have the innermost circle and then you have a slightly bigger circle or a circle that is made up of people who are not as close and thereafter those who are not even as close as those and thereafter just acquaintances. The reason we say circles is there are some people who are so close that we can share much more with them, whereas others we need to hold them at an arm's length with respect with love, with care, love for our deen, for our religion, for our maker, for, for the entire uh, community at large. But that love should be based on our understanding of what love is. It does not mean that you love someone so you drop all barriers and you let them have whatever they need and want. No, we need to realize that certain people are within a closed circle. There are others whom we might not trust that much. We might not have tested that trust yet. We might not know exactly where they're standing and for that reason we won't share so much information. We won't enjoy such intimate relation with them and so on because of their distance with us. Also what is very important is as friends the Quran says The close friends, we normally use the term bosom buddies, those who are very close, we find the Quran says they will be enemies on the day of judgment except for those who used to be conscious of their maker. The reason the Quran says this is because they will, there are so many people who are close to each other but that friendship has not led them to become closer to their maker and for this reason on the day of resurrection they will say I wish that I had had such and such a person as a friend rather than this one or I wish I did not have this particular person as a friend of mine because they led me astray. They took me away from the worship of the maker. They took me away from goodness and they took me to that which was evil. And for this reason they have resulted in my destruction today. And this is why I wish and I hope and I wish that I didn't have these people as my friends. Now what we need to learn is when a person's friendship has not drawn uh, the, both of them 
to closer to the Almighty, they are at loss. Some people know each other because of wealth. Some people know each other because of something else. Maybe they go to school together or they enjoy a sport. They play golf together or whatever else they do together. We need to know that that needs to stay within that circle. It does not mean they will now come into your home and you will allow them to come into your home without vetting their children and the way they've brought up their children because sometimes you might have suffered to bring up your children in such a good way and because you've allowed the children of someone whom you considered a friend into your home, they may then spoil the tongues of your children, the eyes of your children, the way your children have been brought up can all be literally poured water over within moments because of your mistake of not knowing the barrier and where to put it between you and a certain acquaintance of yours. So with us, we must be beneficial to those who have befriended us or those whom we've allowed to befriend. If they are making a mistake, it is our duty to tell them that you are going wrong here. And if we don't tell them, we are going to be making an even bigger mistake. We are going to be responsible on the day of judgment. The Almighty is going to ask us, I made you a friend of so and so. Why did you not remind them of their duty towards me? You saw them going wrong and you'd never ever batted an eyelid. You never ever told them that what you are doing is wrong, what you are saying is wrong. Now, what we need to learn as well from this is never feel bad when you are corrected. Because sometimes when a person is corrected, if he or she feels bad, nobody's going to correct them in the future. So if I feel bad because someone has highlighted a mistake I am making, the only way I will excel is when I thank them. And I really think of what they have to say. And sometimes I might feel that maybe they have not understood me properly. But the minimum is I have taken their advice. I have not disrespected them. They have been genuine to me. They have corrected me. And I need to thank the Almighty that certain people are there to correct me. There is a growing trend amongst the young. They do not want to be told anything sometimes. If that is the case, how are we going to develop? How will we grow? How will we become closer to our maker? How will we be able to succeed in this world and the next? For example, a man whose wad of notes is sticking out of his pocket, either the side pockets or the top pockets, and someone were to say, brother, your money is sticking out of your pocket. And he says, hey, who are you to tell me? I don't want to listen. Why do you talk to me? Well, they are foolish. The thief will come and take that money and they will regret. The next time we see the money almost dangling to the floor, we will keep quiet because we know the answer we had the last time. This will result in loss of wealth and lots of destruction. It's important for us to know when people correct us, be happy. If someone says, look brother or look sister, I think you are making a mistake, that is true friendship. They have a genuine feeling for us and for this reason, we need to befriend those whom we will be able to learn from. And I hope and I pray we have had a piece of advice regarding friends. It's a very interesting topic. It's very long. But as you know, we would like to only mention a few points so that people can digest what we are saying. And until we meet again, we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.